I don't have much faith in that thing right now with so many new buildings uh, very exotically built and falling down like the Hyatt House uh, Hotel. I, I, I get very uncomfortable when I drive under that thing. I'm Jackie Orion. Seattle is a city of water, and getting between any two points often involves crossing and sometimes waiting for a bridge. On the I-90 crossings, the, uh, the one thing that's not included on the drawings is the foundation system. It is part of the... Bill Cranston is a structural engineer for Kramer, Chin & Mayo, a consulting firm being considered for the new I-90 floating bridge approach. There are many factors in selecting any new bridge design. The one of greatest significance is cost, how many dollars are going to be spent. Uh, the other factors would be the height, the clearance for shipping, for traffic, um, material availability, uh, steel may be less expensive at certain times than concrete, um, durability, uh, maintenance requirements, and another major item is aesthetics. Seattle is, has a number of different uh, crossing requirements for bridges. It's unique in that respect, probably. Uh, there's the floating bridges, the I-90, the uh, Evergreen Point, the bascule bridges, uh, Fremont and so forth, that are required because of ship crossings, but it was too expensive to build a high bridge. The high bridges are the, the older ones, the Aurora Bridge, uh, steel cantilever bridge, and the new one, the West Seattle Bridge, which is a uh, pre-stressed concrete bridge that was elevated because of the requirement for, for ship clearances. Anyone going to West Seattle has to put up with the detours. But you can't help but wonder, while you're making your way through the maze, what is going on with all this construction? This is no ordinary bridge. It's really two types of construction, the most unique section being the high-rise cantilever towers over the Duwamish River. Bruce Wassell of the Seattle Engineering Department is project director for the $150 million West Seattle Bridge. We started there with the main span, uh, the pier that you can see in the background. We're cantilevering off of that with segments, segments that are about 16 and a half feet each. And we build about one of those a week back toward the pier, right opposite me and out over the center of the river. There are uh, a total of 17 segments on either side of that pier that have to be constructed. We have uh, 10 on the water side now and nine on the land side, and then we'll repeat that whole process over on the opposite bank of the river. Is this a rare kind of construction? Yeah, the closest bridge that was built in this manner was uh, down in Portland, the I-205 bridge. But other than that, uh, for the west coast, there hasn't been too many segmental bridges constructed. It's even fairly rare in, uh, in the United States, uh, probably within the last 10 years is the only time bridges have been built in this way. Boissel says the bridge is limber and will give a little to guard against damage from earthquakes, which seems incredible considering its size. The entire project is over a mile long. It's 5,700 feet long. It goes from the Spokane Street Viaduct on the east in the vicinity of the Alaska Way Viaduct to oh, about 26th Avenue Southwest on the west. The spans for the approach structure are fairly uh, good size, even though that approach structure is uh, constructed under conventional means using precast concrete I-beam girders about 155 feet in length. But with those 155 foot spans, those are big girders to bring in over the highway system and get them in here and lift them up into place but the contractor's done a good job of doing that. So what's the bridge's progress report? Well, I'd say that we're doing real well. We are uh, about 40% complete. Some elements of the work are maybe a few weeks behind schedule, but we have plenty of opportunity to make that up by the end of the uh, construction time. How's your budget? Budgets look good. Uh, we're under the budget we forecast, and that's the way we're gonna keep this job all the way through. You seem pretty involved with this bridge. Is this your baby? This is my baby. I've worked on it for five years, uh, since uh, actually August of 1977. And I, I'd like to say a little bit about the West Seattle people. I think they're just a terrific lot. You know, they've put up with a lot of problems for many, many years in this corridor, and there was no hope for them at all. After the detours, what can they expect? Then they can expect <laughs> a real nice facility to commute with. Two eastbound lanes will be opened for traffic November 1983, with a full six-lane bridge completed by the summer of 84. I'm Jackie Orion. Good night. <laughs>